Let's imagine, for purposes of edification and entertainment, that we are about to go on a journey by rocket ship. We won't go terribly far, just to the edge of our own solar system, but we need to get a fix on how big a place space is and what a small part of it we occupy. Now, the bad news, I'm afraid, is that we won't be home for supper. Even at the speed of light, it would take seven hours to get to Pluto. But of course, we can't travel at anything like that speed. The best speeds yet achieved by any human object are those of the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, which are now flying away from us at about 35,000 miles an hour. The good news is that if we wait until January 2006, which is when NASA's New Horizons spacecraft is tentatively scheduled to depart for Pluto, we can take advantage of favorable Jovian positioning, plus some advances in technology, and get there in only a decade or so. Though getting home again will take rather longer, I'm afraid. At all events, it's going to be a long trip. Now, the first thing you are likely to realize is that space is extremely well-named and rather dismayingly uneventful. Our solar system may be the liveliest thing for trillions of miles, but all the visible stuff in it, the sun, the planets and their moons, the billion or so tumbling rocks, comets, and other miscellaneous drifting detritus, fills less than a trillionth of the available space. Such are the distances, in fact, that it isn't possible, in any practical terms, to draw the solar system to scale. On a diagram of the solar system, with Earth reduced to about the diameter of a pea, Pluto would be a mile and a half distant, and about the size of a bacterium, so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. By the time we reach Pluto, we've come so far that the Sun has shrunk to the size of a pinhead. We won't get to the solar system's edge until we have passed through the Oort cloud, a vast celestial realm of drifting comets, and we won't reach the Oort cloud for another, I'm so sorry about this, 10,000 years. Of course, based on what we know now and can reasonably imagine, there's absolutely no prospect that any human being will ever visit the edge of our own solar system. Ever. It's just too far. As it is, even with the Hubble telescope, we can't see even into the Oort cloud, so we don't actually know that it is there. Its existence is probable, but entirely hypothetical. But let's pretend again that we have made it to the Oort cloud. We're so far from our own sun that it's not even the brightest star in the sky. It is a remarkable thought that that distant tiny twinkle has enough gravity to hold at least a trillion comets in orbit. It's not a very strong bond, so the comets drift in a stately manner, moving at only about 220 miles an hour. From time to time, some of these lonely comets are nudged out of their normal orbit by some slight gravitational perturbation, a passing star perhaps. Sometimes they are ejected into the emptiness of space, never to be seen again. But sometimes they fall into a long orbit around the sun, as with Halley's Comet. Just occasionally these stray visitors smack into something solid, like Earth. That's why we've come out here now, because the comet we've come to see has just begun a long fall towards the center of the solar system. It's headed for, of all places, Manson, Iowa. It's going to take a long time to get there, three or four million years at least, so we'll leave it for now and return to it much later in the story. So that's your solar system. Space, let me repeat, is enormous. The average distance between stars out there is 20 million million miles. Even at speeds approaching those of light, these are fantastically challenging distances for any traveling individual. Of course, it is possible that alien beings travel billions of miles to amuse themselves by planting crop circles in Wiltshire or to frighten the daylights out of some poor guy in a pickup truck on a lonely road in Arizona. They must have teenagers after all, but it does seem unlikely. Still, statistically, the probability that there are other thinking beings out there is good. Nobody knows how many stars there are in the Milky Way. Estimates range from 100 billion or so to perhaps 400 billion. And the Milky Way is just one of 140 billion or so other galaxies. Unfortunately, space being spacious, the average distance between any two of these civilizations is reckoned to be at least 200 light years. It means that even if these beings know we are here and are somehow able to see us in their telescopes, they're not seeing you and me. They're watching the French Revolution and Thomas Jefferson. 200 light years is a distance so far beyond us as to be, well, just beyond us. So even if we are not really alone, 
in all practical terms we are. Which is why, perhaps, it is good news that in February 1999, the International Astronomical Union ruled officially that Pluto is a planet. The universe is a big and lonely place. We can do with all the neighbors we can get. <laughs>